Hello viewers, for the past couple of months I've been playing a lot of Gran Turismo 7, the latest game in the Gran Turismo series, but sat there on my PlayStation dashboard has been Gran Turismo Sport, the game I put so many hours into and have not played for a very long time. My last video in fact was 8 months ago where I unlocked the Platinum Trophy and got to the highest level in the game. I have not actually played this game since GT7 came out, as you can see, no miles done, and I felt like jumping onto multiplayer once again to see what we could do. And uh, it happened to be a Group 3 race around Monza without the chicane. And the first thing that struck me about jumping back in is just how dated it looks already. Uh, Grand Turismo 7 does do a good job of improving the visuals of the series. Um, and so jumping back into GT Sport, it definitely felt very weird. Even though I played this game for like 1800 hours I think I put into this game in total. So I didn't have much time here to try to get used to the physics which definitely were different. It didn't feel the same as GT7, it has to be said. Uh, in many ways it felt more stable, the, the physics. Um, they're a bit more oversteer in GT7. But I put a lap in and then we have our countdown to our first multiplayer race in a long time. Albeit uh, it was actually a disconnection from the network. And I jumped into another one. And can you guess what's about to happen? Yes, that's right. Another disconnection. This happened about nine or ten times before I was lucky enough to actually have a race. Would you believe it? And uh, for this one, I was starting in P6, of all places to start, upon your return to the game. And there were actual people playing it. And to be fair, you know, PS5 is in shortage. I guess there's quite a lot of people still playing GT Sport, to be fair. You know, fair enough. Why not? So here, we're going to head past this guy. We do not have to break for the chicane. We're playing the no chicane version. I've gone for the McLaren F1 GTR which is the go-to car around any track with very long straights, such as Monza No Chicane, which we are driving. In towards the Della Roja, and lots of anarchy here amongst the cars in front, and uh, the Aston Martin there following us quite closely, looking towards the inside here, and I think I scared the uh, that driver off the, the apex, didn't really seem to want to turn in at all. And that, therefore, grants me P4. And uh, just take a look at the British guy there in second. Disappears completely. Not sure what happened. Let's just say he disconnected, but you never know. Could have been abducted by aliens. That's just another alternative theory. And to be fair, you can't disprove the fact that he might have got abducted by aliens. I mean, you can't prove me wrong, per se. But who knows? But well, that's kind of besides the point really, isn't it? Because we're going to head down towards Parabolica here, up behind the French driver. And uh, we have, in turn, the Spaniard behind is going to go through. I'm going to lose a position in the Aston Martin. So brave choice here to not go for the McLaren, but I respect it, I must say. I'm going to bump him up the road here and try to get alongside. Can we get alongside him? We're going to pull to the left-hand side here. Now I'm going to keep bumping him, give him the give him the line here, give him the benefit of the doubt that he can take this next corner quite quickly, and he does. You know, just showed a bit of faith in him, and we both go through there in harmony, uh, one after another, in towards Della Roja, and I'm a little bit late on the brakes. Is that going to be a penalty? I think that was a bit over ambitious on that second apex, and indeed it is my first penalty back in the game. And uh, how I have not missed it. Uh, serving a penalty here after the Lesmo 2 on the run up towards the Ascari. And that puts me down in P5. And it looked like I had good forward momentum in this race. But then this lap was not a good one. Frenchman up the inside in another Aston Martin. Albeit with a penalty yet to serve. And look at the slipstream difference. I think this is a key difference. I know I'm in a faster car in a straight line. The slipstream is so much stronger in GT Sport compared to GT7. The guys up in front, not giving each other too much space. 
and um, later on in the lap with uh, this guy catching up I got the brakes and unfortunately turned into a bit of a snooker table really and I was on the receiving end of a collision and it put me across the Ascari unceremoniously moving them down to P8 not ideal but then coming down into here this guy uh, he just kind of forgets that braking needs to be done and goes flying off the track and I'm back into th uh, into uh, P7 um, but with a chance of P6 can we get our infamous the coveted P6 in this race probably not because I've got myself a penalty which is a really stupid thing to do although all oh, let's see what's gonna go on here Frenchman there I sounded really shocked didn't I a Frenchman making a big mistake I don't know what happened I'm presuming he made a mistake but he could have been fired off intentionally into the gravel I'm in P6, back to P7. It really is a yo-yo kind of race. Then coming up into this turn, I decided to block the inside, as I'm entitled to do. But the Portuguese decided, well, you know what? You can just go across uh, the gravel trap once again. And then I lose a handful of positions. And um, the Dutchman there spins off and crashes. And I'm into ninth. If you turn the screen upside down, then it is sixth, so it's the same thing. And you see there, my driver tar looking on, kind of in bewilderment at that race. Now I thought let's let's change over to the orange McLaren F1 and give this car a really good go. But no prizes for guessing. Yep, it was another disconnect, and um, I decided to jump back into the race that got me level 50 in the game all those months ago a race I did 173 times quite painfully over the course of many days and um, there's no point in showing you this race is really boring I just wanted to show you that I did it uh, for the 174th and probably the final time in my life ever I hope to never do it and then I got granted a Peugeot VGT Thank you so much, uh, Gran Turismo, for that car, which I'll never use, ever. Now, we're going to jump into this one. A Nürburgring Group 4 race. And I'm starting last, 14th. Look at this weird grid position at the start of this race. It does remind me of how much better and closer the rolling starts are in GT7. Look how distant I am. The leader is about approx well, approximately... 10,000 miles away as I start the race which isn't ideal so I've got a lot of work to do here up against this French driver in the Mustang I'm driving the WRX in the very curious roof cam as uh, we move up into 13th down into turn 6 here a little bit wide but then as we head down in towards the chicane sorry the hairpin at the bottom of the track Frenchman kind of decides Super GT, um, may I introduce you to the gravel? There it is. And <laughs> I'm, back, I'm back into last. So not a good start. But by the end of lap one, thankfully I do manage to start catching up with some actual cars here. You might notice a lot of stuttering, which is quite weird. Now, I had to resort to going onto my Wi-Fi rather than a cable. And that is actually what allowed me to get into a lot more races. It was really weird. I don't know why that worked, but it did. Now, I tried the old switcheroo here, and it turned into a murder as I uh, unceremoniously pushed beyond the Mustang. So, not the cleanest old switcheroo. In fact, it wasn't an old switcheroo. It was just, well, just me killing a French guy, basically. Now, can we try to get past these guys here? It's taken us a whole lap to catch up, and... You know, that is a result of the rolling starts being so spread out. And, oh, goodness me, guy off there. Grazing barrier, coming back onto the track. And this kicks off, really, a couple of seconds of just utter carnage. And it was really just entertaining to see. And I pushed my way through with brute force. But take a look at this down at the hairpin at the bottom of the track as we hit our brakes. The guy behind, very late, and I turn away. Then thankfully, the, the Dutch guy there comes in to complete the kill and uh, wipe out the Frenchman. And my goodness, this uh, it really is kicking off big time here. 
and we're going to kick over to the left hand side and go for the move here towards turn 10 get the job done thank you very much two in a row yes please thank you very much get to the apex park it on it wait for the bump thank you and away we go now at the end of the race lap number three looked like a dutchman here serving a penalty down in towards the hairpin this hairpin seemed to be the center of carnage in the known universe taking the mantle away from monza turn one although actually no it wasn't too bad there on that lap trying to pick our way through past the Ukra uh, ukrainian driver and then can we get past this dutch guy he's lagging left and right uh, but if he's lagging i'm lagging so it's probably oh, i don't know who knows what's going on i don't know it looks like we've all got a green bar connections but clearly that's not the case as uh, we get the move done, it's actually quite a tidy little overtake there, to be honest. And uh, that was that, really. Bringing home a P8, uh, where we started P14. So, I suppose a decent result. And uh, we went up six positions. Not too bad. And this brought us to this race, which I really enjoyed, actually. Um, it was Bathurst, or bar first if you want to trigger any australians in the comments and um i started uh 12th out of 16. it's a nine lap race around bathurst you have to use the medium and the soft tire now i didn't really know the strategy because if this was the first time i was doing the race so i jumped onto the medium to be a bit more conservative and then get onto the better tire later on typically that is the better strategy as the car how do I say it? You want to be on the best tyre when the car is lighter, which it will be at the end of the race. Now, coming down the hill, it seemed as though this NSX was having all sorts of problems, quite frankly. And you can see the level of lag is really rather high. Too high, if we're being honest. As uh, we're going to tuck into the slipstream here. And even with the lag, we are able to work out where he's going, where I'm going. I decide to go to the right. Can we get a whiff of slipstream with the cars in front? I think we can, but we do have the power advantage. The NSX is not known to be a power car. And I'm in the Supra, which very much is. In towards the chase. And back into P12. Just really trying to grow into this race. As we then head in towards the final turn of the first lap. And it's really hard to decide exactly what's going on here, but that guy just washes wide on the exit and we gain a further position. So that was a good opening lap, I would say. Losing out to this Belgian driver in front, but if he's on the soft tyre, that's not too bad. We can hopefully just tuck into the slipstream of him and he can pull us both along. As, well, I say that, but then I'm obviously just going to go for a move and disregard that completely and betray him. Go up the inside and well actually it's not a betrayal really is it? I'm overtaking you, it's a race, we're supposed to finish in front of each other. So no betraying here, we did not sign a peace agreement going into the race that we would not overtake each other. And um, I'm going to have to try and have a good sector here at the top of the hill and it really is a fun track this. When you really get in the groove of the top of the hill, top of the mountain, it really does flow very nicely. It looks like this German having a torrid time in the Hyundai. Up the inside we go, it's another position gained. Now up behind the Chevrolet, hurtling down the hill now as we descend the mountain. Can we get up the inside? It's probably not possible here. This section of the circuit, very narrow, not known to be good for overtaking. And then down the dipper, um, is it the dip or is it Forest Elbow? Someone in the in the chat is going to have to correct me because I always get this muddled up. And I should probably do a bit more research before I commentate on a video. But here we go, down the back straight. It's a drag race, but really it's not a race because I've got... Well, I've got a bump draft from the fellow Supra and I'm in a Supra, which is the go-to straight line speed car. Other than the McLaren F1 which we used in the first race, but McLaren F1 isn't the best car around this track, so... Are you still with me? Probably not. Now down towards the final corner, lap number two. Again, another successful lap, I would say. 
as we gained a couple of positions we successfully betrayed the Belgian driver and there's quite a big gap now towards the guys in front so we've got a couple of laps here to try to just really reel them in and here by the end of lap four we have begun to reel these guys in the Belgian driver kind of I don't know what fell by the wayside behind into the pit lane we go the most treacherous pit lane entry and I thankfully get on the brakes just in time onto the soft tire we go get those mediums off get the better tire on and we have five laps left to go uh, leaving the pit lane in 11th place which wasn't ideal we've lost a couple of positions but really I think a couple of people will pit in here because not everyone has pitted and I don't know the strategy that everyone is going to employ but on the exit of the chase down towards the final turn a couple of cars going to peel to the left yes they are what's that two three cars going in we should gain a few positions here now I have no idea what is going on and I must say I think I might have spun that car around but with the lag it is quite hard to tell exactly what is going on it's really hard to say and um, this is the annoying thing because if I used a wired connection I couldn't connect to any of the races but if I used Wi-Fi it seemed to be really unstable but I could get into the race uh, so not sure what's going on Polyphony kind of using the most basic uh, servers from wish.com and they're not really working all that well uh, or maybe it's my internet but I think my internet's pretty good it should be good it normally works pretty well um, so I have read the GT Planet forums and lots of people have been reporting this issue of GT Sport just being absolutely trash in terms of connection and just connectivity in general and getting into races etc now this is lap 6 out of 9 catching up with the group in front and we have a potential here to gain a few more positions and get into the top 5 perhaps uh, just catching up with these guys and this was a really fun race and you know what I actually quite enjoyed jumping back into GT Sport I don't think it's going to be a permanent change I can't see myself playing this instead of GT7 but it must be said that you know Gran Turismo Sport it brought about probably the biggest rise in this channel as before I bought the game or when I bought the game I was on less than 100,000 subscribers and that was back in 2017 so I've gone you know gone on quite a journey with this game and you know this channel has gone on quite a big journey over the lifespan of GT Sport so it's always going to hold a special place in the heart of the Super GT channel and you know there, there can be no question of that that I'd say that this game really brought about the biggest change in this channel and I'm very thankful for this game because it's kind of weird because I I bought the game on a whim during a Forza Motorsport 7 stream because um, my brother kind of phoned me halfway through a stream and asked if I wanted to buy a PlayStation off of him and GT Sport and I just did and it's kind of weird that a racing game channel would just do that it's kind of weird but yeah you know the rest of history here we are to this day now on what 770 ish thousand subscribers it's been quite a crazy journey must be said and uh, this journey in this race was getting rather interesting because i was definitely quicker than the uh this group from second to fifth and i was gaining on them but perhaps i'd left it a little bit too late the leader was a good six seconds ahead i wasn't really able to catch up with him but uh, from second look at the lag it's kind of ridiculous at this point and this race just needed one more lap I think because I, I did my best to catch up with this battle for second and I kind of did but I just needed a little bit more time but it was a really enjoyable uh, journey I'm trying to get my words out here down in towards the final corner of the race just hoping for some sort of incident I know you shouldn't do that but I was hoping that perhaps someone would crash it didn't happen the racing was actually pretty respectful for the most part I would say and I think that happens when a game gets old uh, you get more respectful drivers I finished in P6 ultimately and I did want to get a race win I've had I can't remember the exact number over 200 wins on this game online 
and I set a lap time here 59.98 breaking the two minute barrier and that put me on pole position for this one this turned out to be a pretty good battle with the Austrian driver behind as we, as we begin the race the guy behind is driving the Mercedes and I can't recall with the BOP how good this car is I know the Supra is always a solid choice around this kind of track but this guy in the Mercedes proved to be quite a good opponent and he goes to the outside here I force him to the left hand side the outside in towards turn two and I managed to just edge him wide and keep the lead which is quite crucial at that corner because it keeps keeps you in the lead really for the majority of the lap but here I make quite a big error on the apex literally hitting the apex and what that does in turn is it gives him a run down the straight and the Mercedes power as you can see pretty good albeit I did get a bad exit but still it's a good drag race between the two of us he's going to have the inside for the corner coming up as you can see and there's not much I can do I have to pretty much let the overtake happen at that point down into second but knowing that I could potentially get back into this race and try to get back past him there's plenty of time left yet so I'm on the soft tyre and I'm guessing he's also on the soft tyre so there's no worry just, just yet it's a long race to go but uh, this second lap proved to be quite difficult as uh, I wasn't quite completely on it as well as I could have been perhaps a bit of fade from not having played this game in quite a while um, but over the course of this lap as you can see the Austrian driver just began to drive clear and I wasn't quite able to keep with him I wasn't driving as cleanly as I perhaps could have done and I was out of slipstream range down the back straight which is quite crucial because you can gain a lot of time in the slipstream down that very long straight he made a mistake here though on the exit of the chase and that kind of brought me back into contention and back into slipstream range quite crucially as we then head through the final apex of lap number two so I needed to get this uh, next corner dead right and then I would stick into the slipstream down the uh, subsequent straight luckily for me I managed to do exactly that and um, a bit later in the lap uh, through the top of the mountain I was firmly within range and my main target now is to get quite close to him as I am and stick this close going onto the back straight therefore I could potentially get the slipstream overtake at the end of the lap uh, so it's quite a treacherous section this very easy to get it wrong to hit the wall to really misjudge it in some way and I think we do a decent job he does actually take quite a good section albeit what you can see of it anyway because of the lag but here we are half a second behind and this shows you the power not only of the super I guess but also of the slipstream in GT Sport which to be honest was probably in hindsight overpowered I think GT7 does it a bit better although I perhaps would say that the medium between the two would be the best option um, but yeah we slipstream past him quite effortlessly gaining more than half a second in one straight alone just shows you how strong it is and uh, down into towards the final corner not within range of being overtaken thankfully uh, but on the next lap into the chase he makes a massive error here as you can see um, the gap goes up to like three seconds and we take a look behind he's, he, I don't know what he did but he went very wide I think and lost a lot of time and at the end of the race I managed to bring home the race win and yeah my first win on GT Sport in many months in the best part of a year my 237th and possibly final win on Gran Turismo Sport and on that note we wrap this video up there's another video on the screen right now for your viewing pleasure please do give it a click and in the meantime have an amazing day and I shall see you next time goodbye